Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and we're bringing you another budget deck tech. This time we're going to take a look at Mono Green Stompy. We've seen Mono Green decks, or nearly Mono Green decks, doing quite a bit of work in standard sense rotation and it's easy to see why. With cards like Boon Seder, Sylvan Carotid, and Pelucranos World Eater, the deck has powerful rares at every stage of the game. However, the deck also has its share of inexpensive commons and uncommons that pull their weight in supporting the deck. For example, Elvish Mystic and Voyaging Seder, together making up most of the deck's man acceleration, are a common. Powerful Tempo 2-drop Burning Tree Emissary is an uncommon. So let's take a look at how we fill in the gaps left by the lack of pricey cards like Domi Raid and Garrett Collar of Beasts. We're going to be light on one drops, considering that we want to accelerate heavily and emphasize the upper end of the curve. We want to play a set of Elvish Mystic here to be sure. Warrior's Lesson also looks pretty good, and I'll explain why. Part of what makes Planeswalkers like Garrett Collar of Beasts and Domi Raid so good is that they give Stompy decks access to card draw, which they usually don't have. That those cards have been in so many decks like this is a strong indicator that we need something like it in our deck. Unfortunately, as you might have guessed, green card draw at lower rarities is in short supply. The best thing you can really run is Warrior's Lesson, which lets you grant two creatures the ability to draw you a card whenever they hit a player in combat. We're running some trampling creatures higher in the curve to make that trigger a little easier to hit. Also remember that the card is an instant, so you can always just point it at some unblocked creatures during declare blockers. With that in mind, we'll run a playset of Warrior's Lesson. Two mana is where we really take off. For one, it's where we have our second piece of acceleration, Voyaging Seder. We have our first aggressive creature, Colonian Tusker, at this spot in the curve as well. Considering that we're running mono green, we should have no problem dropping it, and a 3-3 for two is just efficient. Also at two mana, we have Burning Tree Emissary. At about two dollars, this card is relatively expensive for this list, but it's very much worth it. Burning Tree Emissary comes down any time, turn 2 or later, as an essentially free body. On turn 2, you can play directly into Voyaging Seder or Colonian Tusker if you dropped an Elvish Mystic on turn 1. Later in the game, you can drop it and go right on into a Pit Fight to take out a threat. Which brings us to our last 2-drop, Pit Fight. One of Domri's useful abilities is to allow your creatures to fight your opponents. While we don't have access to that, we can do the next best thing, which is a card that does just that, but does it as an instant. Given how creature heavy standard is right now, a little removal can go a long way. Like our one ofs, all of our two drops will be four ofs. The three drop slot on our curve is fairly light. Hopefully by now we'll have some mana acceleration on the table, so we won't have to worry about hitting our three slot in order to curve out. We have a pair of Reverend Hunter here, which can really shine in the late game, but isn't too shabby on turn 3 or 4 either. If you hit Devotion Heavy 2 drops like Burning Tree Emissary or Colonian Tusker, he can come in as big as a 5-5 on turn 3. Our other 3 drop is a pair of Bow of Nylia. This card encourages an aggressive strategy, especially against other aggressive decks, by making blocking a dangerous prospect for your opponent. Its modal ability is also versatile enough to ensure you won't be high and dry, even in matchups where the death touch granting effect is irrelevant. 4 mana is where things get fun, because this is where we have our bread and butter beat sticks. In this deck, the 4 slot is all about 3 threes with trample and efficient abilities. Karaz the Monitor is an immediate threat and also continues to serve a purpose even from beyond the grave with its scavenge ability. 7 mana is a bit expensive, but we have enough acceleration that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Our other 4 drop is Nylia's Emissary. If you need a threat sooner than later, you can just drop the Emissary on its own and start swinging. But if you can wait until you hit 6 mana, it's definitely worth it to bestow the Emissary on something else. Ideally, you want to hit something that doesn't have trample. Being bestowed on anything makes the Emissary a bigger body than it would be by itself. The other place where the bestowing the Emissary helps is with making better threats out of the deck's larger creatures. A huge Reverend Hunter or an Arbor Colossus is only helped by the addition of Trample. Both of our 4 drops are playsets. Speaking of which, we have one 5 drop to finish our curve, and that is a single Arbor Colossus. This guy is big, and he has a monstrous ability that makes him even huger and takes out a flyer if your opponent has any. He also gives your devotion a big boost, which is nice if you want to drop a late game Reverend Hunter. 
He's a little bit situational, but that's why we only run one of him. Our land base is simple, 23 forests and that's it. There are some cards that we could add to the land base if we were willing to make the deck a little more expensive, Nick those Shrined in Nicks and Mute of All Leap to Mind. If you have any of those, feel free to throw them in, but our list is just going to stick with basic forests. That's the main deck covered, let's talk sideboard. Now exactly what you want to add here is going to depend on your local metagame, but here are some general suggestions. Savage Summoning is a card that we were considering putting in the main list. The fact that it isn't particularly card efficient isn't ideal, but it's still valuable insurance against control decks as a one or two of. We would recommend more, but control decks haven't been running quite as many counters now as they used to. The ones we've seen lately run five or more likely fewer. Another thing you might want to consider is Fade into Antiquity as an answer to gods if you're seeing devotion decks. This deck might have trouble dealing with indestructible creatures by conventional means, but while 3 mana is a bit expensive, Fade into Antiquity is certainly an answer. It also takes out weapons, which is helpful given how ubiquitous both Bow of Nylia and Whip of Erebos are in their colors devotion decks. Depending on your local metagame and how much flying there is in it, you might want to consider more copies of Arbor Colossus or Bow of Nylia. If you're seeing more big flyers like Desecration Demon, go with the Colossus. If you're mostly seeing smaller ones like Scion of Vidugazi's Bird Tokens, use the Bow. Also keep in mind that the Bow is versatile enough that it could come in handy even if you don't use it for its anti-flyer mode. Bow of Nalia is also solid in the aggro matchup, because having Death Touch on the attack is helpful, and using its life gain mode counters a lot of aggressive decks, particularly red ones. Other cards we were thinking about are Hunt the Hunter and Sylvan Primordial. Hunt the Hunter is situational of course. If you're not seeing much green, run fewer, or just don't bother if you don't think you'll get to use it. But if you're seeing green in your metagame, Hunt the Hunter is a slam dunk in that matchup. Sylvan Primordial is good in small numbers, just because it lets you take out anything that's not a creature that you might be having trouble with. Unfortunately, it's on the expensive end, and its forest grabbing ability isn't going to be too relevant by the time you already have 7 mana out. Still, there's no other card that does exactly what the Primordial does when it comes to taking out non-creature threats. We hope you enjoyed this budget deck tech from Mono Green Stompy. If there are any specific strategies you'd like to see a budget deck tech of, leave them in the comments below. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.